Colin had a problem and a microphone to spare. Thomas took it up and so the podcast went to air. For weeks and months they trolled through every single DVD. They've unwrapped all the ones they can and now they're cellulose free. Now they're cellulose free. Hello dear listener and welcome to Cellulose Free. My name is Colin and with me as always is my fellow film watcher, compadre and son, Thomas. Hi, hello. I still took a breath. What? Uh, I think I'm unfit. I think that's what it is. <laughs> I did try to do something about that yesterday, and then today completely negated it by uh, eating large amounts of apple crumble, <laughs> and I'm feeling like the Goodyear blimp, bl- 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 the Goodyear blimp. So, what have you been up to this week? Um, no baseball. You can't talk about baseball. I'm. I've received messages. I'm going to talk about baseball. Secret but, private messages um, that saying please. Enough of the blaze ball already. This is, I mean, this is this is like talking about uh, news from Mars and AFC Wimbledon. <laughs> Speaking of news from Mars, my name is travelling all over Mars at the moment. Okay, a very small part of Mars. Good. You're meant to go. Wow, yeah. that's cool. So you got your name stuck on that little plaque, one of them. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, <laughs> uh, right, uh, yeah. <laughs> which made me think, okay, it, it's not just digitally, it's not digitally recorded, it's actually etched onto it. What if it turns out that my name is actually a swear word in Martian, <laughs> an, a, an extremely offensive swear word in Martian, and when the Martians actually stumble upon the the rover in uh what is actually their their disused rubbish dump um they they discover this rover and they check over it with a fine tooth comb and then get insulted by my name and declare war on earth no i think they'll just have trouble spelling the surname <laughs> Okay, so uh, so w- what's the news from AFC Wimbledon then? <laughs> okay, so as, as far as things that are not baseball, um, not much that I can talk about right now. Oh, oh, that that's that's a very uh, uh, carefully worded <laughs> yeah. uh, baiting. Uh, um, I, fr- I I don't know if it will ever come up on the podcast. But I can't talk about it right now. Um, baseball wise new teams descended from the big leagues and brought with them flooding. <laughs> so that was... Good. That was fun. Good. Um, so now, like, a, a tenth, two tenths of all baseball games just experience flooding. Did you just say two tenths? Did you- did did you say two tenths then? It made sense in context because immediately before <laughs> that I'd said a tenth. Oh, okay, right, jolly good. Don't worry about it. Okay. Um, <laughs> and then the season ended. The election didn't go the way I wanted. But oh, you t- you take what you get. Did you vote? I I did vote. Good. Um, and now it's the new season. And everybody's been building stadiums, and that, that's that's really about it. Good. Um, yeah. So, well, th- thanks for sharing that with us. Um, uh, and uh, we'll we'll wait for the next enthralling uh, update on baseball. We shall wait. Mm-hmm. But not right now because no. we have other things to do. We're going to watch a film. And it's not any of the ones that are currently scrolling over the screen. <laughs> no, no. Netflix is desperately trying to make us watch something else. Mm. Um, but we're not going to. I'm going to find it again. 
Um, uh, it'll probably just kind of... Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Oh, I've just bumped the microphone. Oh, oh Thomas just bumped the microphone. I apologise, dear listener, for the uh, reverberation that just occurred. Uh, that was Thomas's fault. Please uh, write in your complaints. Heavily, strongly worded complaints. Mm. And I'll pass them on to him. Okay. What are we watching? We are watching the... Studio Ghibli film, Kiki's Delivery Service. The 1989 Hayao Miyazaki film. We're going to watch it in English, I believe. Um, because my Japanese is very poor. Thomas's is very good. No, he no, did mine is... two years? Two years I of d- Japanese? It's complicated. Because... <laughs> because in- it turns out that his teacher... Okay. Only taught mock Japanese. Let's let's go like over my mock Swedish my with the foreign language history here. <laughs> so, grade five, primary school. Uh, while the grade sixes were off doing Japanese, we were doing German, and uh, that was useful for one geocaching thing, and then it n- never again. Um, <laughs> Good. And that, that actually, knowing a bit of German would have been useful for Schlag den Star, which I occasionally watch with a few people. This is, this is irrelevant. Um, and then grade six, Japanese. Seven and eight, Japanese. Oh, so three years of Japanese. Three, three years. So, yes, we shall watch it in Japanese. And now I know basically no Japanese. Wow. Because I didn't keep it up. Okay. So we are going to watch it in English then. Um, Would you be so kind, Thomas, as to read... We're going to use uh, Netflix's very brief plot synopsis rather than the one on the back of the DVD case because we're watching it on Netflix rather than off the DVD. In this animated adventure, a young witch moves away from her family to practice her craft, but she finds that making new friends is difficult. It's it's nowhere near as enthralling as the back of the DVD case, because it misses out that vital um, pointing out of how it's wonderful for boys and goyles. Short. It is short. The film isn't, so we should get a wriggle on. Well, it's actually not that long it's an hour and 43 minutes so we're gonna hit the play button there will be no flipping over to any flip sides um i'm going to hit the play button and we'll we'll see you on the other side of one hour and 43 minutes turn to side b i told you we weren't you mongrel turn to side b (laughs) yeah turn to side b don't you know take Take, take the internet, flip it over, <laughs> there we, you go. We apologise that your internet is upside down. <laughs> so, did that keep you captivated? It did. Oh, I love that film. It's a good one. I, I, I love it and feel like I have not watched it before. <laughs> Well, I know I have, mm-hmm. um, but it has been so long and there's so much that I've forgotten. Really, completely heart in the right place, sweet, um, strong film. It seems almost apt that uh, at the time of recording, we're very close to have, uh, like, it's just past the international Women's Day. Um, it's there's so many good, solid women in this film. Yeah. Does that is that fair, yeah. or am I just being patronising? I, I I think it really is. Um, strong mothers, strong daughters, and grandmothers. I yeah, I, I like it. I really do. Well worth a watch. I can heartily recommend it. Um, anything you wish to say? I don't know. Um, it's just a very warm film. I don't, 
I don't know what else more to say about the film. Good. Um, Coco. Is, Coco has something to say. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, do I want to bring this up or not? I don't know. Do you? You're going to say that the songs that were used in it weren't the songs that were originally in it. Right, yes. Let's let's talk about Disney, shall we? <laughs> let's, let's... Let's... Let's talk about Disney's influence on international releases mm-hmm. of Ghibli films. Yes. And and how there's just those those little tweaks there <laughs> to make it more quote unquote broadly approachable. Right. And and which just just hem a little away from the original vision. For example, at the end of the film, Gigi says something in the Disney dub. In the original, he does not, and it is left ambiguous. Ah. Okay. I'm just trying to think what... Because I knew that he did say something at the end. But wasn't wasn't it just meow? Uh, one line it was before one that. One line before that. Ah, okay. Right. Okay. <laughs> is it a big spoiler, or are you allowed to say? Uh, it it's. <laughs> or is it irrelevant? It's mostly irrelevant. But and but Disney felt the need to. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's just those. Yeah. Those dialogue changes. There's there's apparently parts of the film. That have had sound effects added because Disney felt that it needed sound effects, <sighs> and this sort of thing is emblematic of Disney's approach to all of Ghibli. Yeah. Uh, that being said, uh, they now do have a dedicated uh, international uh, release person. Mm. who um, is very much uh, hands-on, um, which wasn't the case at the time that this was uh, given an international release. There has certainly been an evolution of how much influence they have allowed Disney to to have on, on international releases. Um, <laughs> to the point where, as of some point last year, uh, I'm pretty sure the the Disney deal has run out. Yes, it's 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 over. Yep. Well, I've I've heard an interview with the uh, with the person concerned uh, who who ensures that translations uh, are, are are more in keeping with the original theme, but also ensuring that the accessibility is there. But, but keeping the soul of the, the mm. original in. That being said, just the atmosphere that is created uh, in that film, mm. uh, I, I don't want to gush too much over it, but the number of times where you could almost smell the air in, in the different regions that uh, Kiki uh, gets to work, you know, you could almost smell the salt air and the, the, the forests and the and when it starts raining um, mm. you could almost smell the rain because the the, the visual and audio cues are just so um, I guess lush it, it's certainly not photorealistic but the tonality of of everything is just right to evoke those those smells emotions um it hit all the senses uh, including smell which is crazy <laughs> am i crazy or could you smell the air too <laughs> i i don't know that i got to that point okay. but it is a very good film <laughs> yeah all right anything else you wish to no, bring up on that that list of uh... yes, the 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 opening and ending songs are different. Yeah, yeah, but... and you could tell 
Uh, I, I mean, they worked. They they certainly worked, but you knew that um, they were. Um, I, I I could be entirely wrong, but my my gut feeling is that it wasn't even an English dub of the original songs. No. Right. Okay. No. Cool. Just um, just new songs. New songs entirely. entirely. Yep. That that was my gut feeling. Um. There is a place in Tasmania, um, almost in the centre of Tasmania, not quite, but uh, where there is a bakery that has become semi-famous for it resembling in the interior the bakery that's in this film. Um, It apparently occurred quite accidentally. And somebody mentioned to the owners, oh, and, and some, they had an influx of uh, Japanese tourists who would always make this comment. And the rumour got around, I guess, and and so they, they ran with it. Um, my understanding is that they've developed certain sections and, and have a Kiki theme. Um, you know, it's not a theme park, it's a, a small family business, but... Uh, mm. They, they've certainly um, lent towards the, the uh, and um, r- ran with it as as much as uh, this little family business could, with the effect of, you know, if if you walk in it and you're familiar with the film, then this place will be familiar to you. Otherwise, it wouldn't scream out at you. This is themed in any way. We have seen a number of. Ghibli films. We have, yes. We own a number of them. Mm-hmm. But there are a number of them that I certainly haven't seen and aren't on the shelf. So, as a little bit of a challenge, I will throw this in in the next segment. The following segment has no title. Thank you. Thanks, me from the future, for these new... Intros that I still have to record. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could always uh, recycle them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Poss- possibly a mix of recycling and new ones, because I don't know if I have 120 <laughs> oh, no. announcement gags in me. Hey, look, the Simpsons always have a different thing but writes on the uh, the blackboard at the beginning. This is true. This so, is true. you know. And couch gags. Yeah. Yeah. But we can we can recycle. Uh, yeah, so the challenge is uh, make your suggestions as to which Ghibli films I haven't seen and that Thomas hasn't seen. And that we haven't seen. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. So th- there's your challenge. Uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, what suggestions are, and I'll be interested to see which ones we haven't. We we received some criticism yes. from one dear listener. I was going to for ask uh, you to failing to mention any of the jokes that we thought worked or did not work. We did we mention did. a couple. We did, yes. Um, I, I, I held back my uh, rebuttal uh, so that we would have some material for the, uh, the podcast, but our, our dear listener uh, really needs to go back and listen to that podcast again, I think, because we certainly mentioned a number of things that we got a giggle out of. Hmm. And do we need to put it any... Yeah, I don't know that there's much more to say. No, no. Partly because I've forgotten <laughs> any jokes I might be able uh, to add to the list. I'm a bit nervous because uh, I left the disc case on the table, the kitchen table, mm. as I was editing it, and uh, Daniel stumbled upon it, and Wendy said, Oh... You might be interested in watching that. <laughs> so, so it, it may be in for another watch, for good or for ill. I don't know. I'm, I'm leaning on the side of that might be the last time that DVD sees play. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
Um, I've I've sat it out there so that it is accessible, but it hasn't been uh, placed into alphabetical order. So Daniel, at least, may watch it on a, a Saturday afternoon or, or something. It won't be a Friday night viewing. No, it, it'll probably find its way into a box on one of the shelves in my room mm-hmm. where I keep such things as a duplicate copy of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Yes. <laughs> it's interesting. I've got a duplicate copy of Spider-Man Homecoming. Homecoming. Yeah. Don't know how that one happened. No, I really do not know how that happened. The, the only thing I can think of was that I maybe uh, went to buy the uh, Far From Home mm. and accidentally picked that up. I don't know. But I feel like it's been there since before. I know. It is certainly not the... Even with this great database, um, I have been caught out a couple of times. It does not help that the uh, JB Hi-Fi store in Eastlands doesn't get phone reception. But that shouldn't matter. The database is in my phone. It is. Than, okay. Scrap that. <laughs> Scrap yes. that excuse. The, the database is, for example, on my iPad. <laughs> it's uh, it's let, the biggest file on uh, you. Let me let me pull up storage here. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll wait for it to cycle through. Uh, just for some clarification, uh, the the reason that this file is going to be so big is that it contains, admittedly, a fairly small um, thumbnail of the front cover and the back cover of every single film in uh, our collection. So the, the larger your collection, the larger this file is going to be. It's it's not the largest one on here. Uh, the largest one on here is GarageBand. Okay, yep. Because samples, samples and samples. stuff. Yep. Um, my Movies comes in. Uh, the app is 74.7 megabytes. The data is 783.6. Yeah, yeah. She's a she's a stonking great big file. <laughs> but that is, that is the way this thing works. Where were we going here? That's a great question. Uh, we, we've berated one of our dear listeners for not, mm-hmm. not actually listening to the episode. Um, we've berated but, ourselves. But criticising, harshly criticising how... Uh, our review. Um, <laughs> We've berated ourselves for By not n- making smart purchasing decisions. That's right. um, but I think it's got something to do with Spider-Man. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Our spidey senses weren't tingling when we purchased the second copy or something. Um, yes. Uh, well, Into the Spider-Verse was a case of us not talking to each oh, other. Oh, it was. I bought a copy. Uh, yes. Yes. You, you came out with it and said, um, I've got a copy of that whereas in my case i didn't come up to me and say oh, i've already bought a copy of that yeah um so hmm. so that's one point each yes indeed in 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 down column down yes. column <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay so uh speaking of points yes uh, submit your uh suggestions as to which studio ghibli films we have not seen and receive arbitrary praise. Indeed. And adulation or condemnation. Mm. You know. It'll be one of those two. It will. Um, shall we move on? Yes, let's. Okay. Pick a film. For next week. So we can. Go to bed. Thomas, I believe it is your turn. It is my turn. And my spidey senses are telling me. Yeah. That there is one more film left on your Christmas uh, gift voucher purchase uh, mm. stack. So, so it's not going to come as any surprise to me as no. to what it's going to be. However, it may come as some surprise to our dear listener. So let's let's set the scene here. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've done Doctor Strangelove. We've done Knives Out. We've done Spaceballs. And those are all relatively reasonably rated. Mm-hmm. In fact, all of the films, 
out there on the shelves, all all of the TV shows, they're all no higher than MA15+. plus. Right, so when you say rated, you, you're talking about uh, a classification rating. Yes, classification. Rating. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, yes, a- MA15+, plus has always been the the limit as far as what goes on our shelves. Mm. But there is something that is not currently on that shelf because it is sitting on my desk underneath a book I still need to read, but that's another story. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sitting on my desk, which has on its cover not a colourful classification no. symbol. It's in harsh black and white. It is. And for any of you Australian dear listeners, you know what that means. This is an R18 plus rated film. Gadzooks, Thomas, what have you done? I have bought, quote, the original cult classic, Battle Royale. (laughs) What on earth possessed you to purchase Battle Royale? I wanted to watch it and it wasn't on any of the streaming services. (laughs) Uh, look, we we shall delve deeper into that, I think, next week when we talk about the film Battle Royale, which is indeed a cult classic. I have seen it. Um, I possibly wasn't in the greatest frame of mind watching it. I s- strongly suspect, because uh, I know that I watched it on uh, SBS, was, which is what used to be our foreign film yeah. service, but... Now, now, now it's, it's all weird. sorts of stuff, and I don't like it anymore. It, um, <laughs> it, it was weird, and it's now weird for different reasons. In, indeed. That are less good. Yes. Um, but I think I was up one night uh, with a, a child, a very, very young child, who wasn't sleeping very well, So, uh, and I wasn't sleeping very well. I'm so, sure it didn't help. <laughs> so, so I watched Battle Royale. My memory of it uh, is is very uh, fragmented, and <laughs> but but certainly enough to leave an, an impact on me. So uh, it could be an interesting journey next week. Would, would you like me to give you a bit of a refresher from the back <laughs> of the case here, Thomas? Would you please read from the back of the case? The rules are simple. It lasts three days. Each player starts with food, water, and a random weapon. If more than one player survives, everyone dies. There is no escape. In the near future, Japan is in a state of collapse. With high unemployment and a generation of youth out of control, the government enacts the Battle Royale program. Each year... A randomly chosen school class is pitted against itself on an abandoned island in a cruel game of survival. With a former teacher overseeing the game, this is a fight to the death with only one winner. Out of curiosity, was the little jingle uh, of Battle Royale for our previous competition uh, any influence on you being curious about the origins? No, no. So no, you were familiar not with... Not even slightly. I was familiar with this film before. <laughs> okay. And, uh, yes, I, I think we'll certainly uh, also talk about um, the influences that it has had on um, other films that f- came after it. So... Mm. Uh, <laughs> would you believe this is a Madman release? <laughs> I would certainly believe that. So, Battle Royale next week, our first R-rated film. And... To, to Possibly the only one in our runtime. Uh, yes. D- depends what we pick up on streaming, I think. I- indeed, yeah. indeed. I, I, I don't tend to veer too, too far into the extreme. Um, the question is, uh, it, it was certainly rated R when it first came out here mm. in Australia. Whether it would still earn an R rating... I do not know. Um, we shall find out. Well, well, this is the director's cut, which came out 
a little bit later. Okay. But I don't know if it's been reclassified since then. I don't expect it would have been, because... Yeah, the, the, the who reclassifies things. Well, they certainly do. Um, now, what was it that was reclassified? Uh, ET was reclassified, um, and something else springs to mind. Well, it doesn't spring enough to mind to actually make me remember what it was, but uh, certainly there there is a history of films being reclassified. So, Battle Royale. Yep. Next week, mm-hmm. if you're brave, <laughs> we hope you'll join us. But until then, we'll catch you next time. Bye. You have been listening to Cellulose Free. Your hosts were Colin, who produces and edits the show, and Thomas, who makes the artwork and music. Cellulose Free is recorded in the Deranged Cat Studios in scenic Tasmania, Australia. We keep track of our extensive physical media collection through My Movies, which we highly recommend. You can find links to that, as well as other places you can find us in the show notes. Cellulose Free is a Hi Hello production. Uh, or it might be in the middle. You probably want it to be in the middle. In the middle. In the middle. Oh, hello. Why, why, why am I not getting a... Don't... Don't cross the street in the middle, in the middle. In it's the middle of the block in the middle. In the middle block of the street. You, you, you've <laughs> lost it. I have. Oh, I lost it years ago. Don't cross the street in the middle, in the middle, in the middle, in the middle, in the middle of the block. Don't cross the street in the middle, in the middle, in the middle, in the middle, in the middle of the block. Teach your eyes to look up, teach your ears to hear. Walk up to the corner where the coast is clear. And wait, and wait, until you've seen the light turn green. Don't cross the street in the middle, in the middle, in the middle, in the middle, in the middle of the block. Don't cross the street in the middle, in the middle, in the middle, in the middle, in the middle of the block. Don't cross the street in the middle, in the middle, in the middle, in the middle, in the middle of the block. Teach your eyes to look up, teach your ears to hear. Walk up to the corner where the coast is clear. And wait, and wait, until you've seen the light turn green. Don't cross the street in the middle, in the middle, in the middle, in the middle, in the middle of the block. Don't cross the street in the middle, in the middle, in the middle, in the middle, in the middle of the block.